University Challenge. Asking the questions, Bamba Gascoigne. Hello and welcome again to University Challenge. We have back our last week's winners, the University of Wales Institute of Science and Technology, and we have their new challengers, the University of Leicester. So let's meet the teams in first, Ewis. Paul Kavanagh from Chelmsford and Essex, reading law. Anthony Williams from Reed of Raw New Swansea, reading town planning. And their captain? David Larner from Milford Haven, David, reading town planning. Brian Dockersy from Liverpool, studying mechanical engineering. Now, Leicester. Stephen Ridder up from Seven Oaks, Kent, doing research in law. Nicholas M. Wright from Yelverton in Devon, reading chemistry with biochemistry. And their captain? Nicholas A. Wright from Sheffield, reading physics <coughs> with microelectronics and computing. Kevin Hartley from North Allerton, North Yorkshire, reading medicine. It turns out that our two Nicholas Wrights didn't know each other until University Challenge brought, brought them together. It's the first time in 22 years we've ever had people with the same Christian name and surname on the team, and so we're going to have to bring in their middle initial. We'll be calling them N M Wright and N A Wright as they answer. So there are the teams. The usual rules: they run on his or her own for a starter question for 10 points, and then a more valuable bonus, always 15, to discuss within the team. So let's go straight into the game, and here's your first starter for 10. What name was derived by British soldiers from the Hindi word Bilayat? Lester N. M. Wright. Cocky. No, bad luck. Following Benedict Lester, full question to you is no conferring. You're on your own. From the Hindi word Bilayati, meaning a foreign land and applied particularly to England, so that the soldiers used. The... U.S. Kavanagh. Blighty. Blighty. Kavanagh. Yeah! Blighty, it was used for home by the soldiers. A bonus of 15 to U.S. First, whose account of life in the RAF entitled The Mint? was published at his own request only in 1955, 20 years after his death. This is Lawrence. Anyone? Uh, Lawrence. Which Lawrence? T. 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 Lawrence. T. Lawrence, correct, five points. Second. Who ex officio holds the position of Master Worker and Warden of the Royal Mint? Uh, Anyone? Um, Chancellor of the Exchequer. Chancellor of the Exchequer, five points. And last, what name is usually given to the drink popular in America, which consists of bourbon whiskey, crushed ice, and sprigs of mint? Red eye. Anyone? Um, Southern Comfort. No, mint julep. A starter again. Who at the time of the French Revolution threw down a dagger on the floor of the House of Commons and said, there's French fraternity for you. Such is the weapon which French Jacobins would plunge into the heart. U.S. Williams. Burke. Burke did indeed the dagger scene. <coughs> known as the dagger scene in the House of Commons. Ten points for U.S. A bonus of 15. First, where in the body is the epicanthus, or epicanthic fold, which is a characteristic of Mongolian peoples? Uh, above the eye. Yes, correct. The skin of a fold of skin above the upper eyelid, five points. Second, what practical and unavoidable reason is there for the blind spot in the retina of the eye where no cells receive vision? Um, the optic nerve originates. Yes, the optic nerve goes out there and there's no room for the cells, five points. And last, what is the difference between an eye bolt and a normal bolt? Anyone? Um, the eye bolt has a screw end. No, an eye bolt has a ring or an eye end for pulling or lifting it out, as, as opposed to the ordinary flat end. The starter again. Which Russian composer, born in 1833, who taught chemistry and founded a school... U.S. Doherty. Borodin. Borodin is correct, for <laughs> chemistry. Ten yeah. points to U.S. to bonus of 15. First, C.P. Snow's novel, The New Men, opens with the words, I heard the first rumour in the middle of an argument with my brother when I was trying to persuade him not to marry. What was the important scientific subject of the rumour in question? At atomic weapons. Atomic weapons? Uh, I'll, I'll let you have it. We're splitting the atom. Um, let me think whether... Uh, the, no, the weapons were not then implicit because if Einstein made such, a, made such a song and dance about the potential aspect of it. No, it was nuclear vision before weapons were involved. <laughs> Secondly, who jointly with Sir John Cockcroft produced the first artificial transmutation of an atomic nucleus in 1931? Uh, Walton. Walton, correct. Five points. And last, at which British university was Ernest Rutherford in 1919 when he wrote, we must conclude that the nitrogen atom is disintegrated 
and that the hydrogen atom which is liberated formed a constituent part of the nitro nitrogen nucleus. Um, which university? Cambridge? No, at Manchester. Start her again. Who arrived in Canada in 1935 as the newly appointed Governor General after eight year years as MP for the Scottish Universities, being much better known in both roles as the... Lester Ridout. John Buchan. John Buchan, and they're off 10 points 11. <laughs> A bonus of 15. First, which ruler was told in mysterious circumstances, <clears throat> thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting? Belshazzar's feast. Anyone? Belshazzar. Belshazzar, correct the writing on the wall at Belshazzar's feast, five points. Second, what machine is used for weighing vehicles by means of a metal plate set into a road? What's the name for that? Uh, Weybridge. Weybridge, five points. And last, what word is applied to the weight of an aircraft in flying condition, but without fuel, oil, crew, removable equipment, not required for flight and payload, the word originally relating to the weight of the wrapping um, on any package? Net weight. It's called... Net weight. Net weight. No, it's tower weight. A starter again. Which day in the Christian calendar is preceded by three rogation days? The day in question always being on Thursday. Uist Kavanagh. Monday, Thursday. No, Lester, can you take it on your own? Lester N. A. Wright. Ascension day. Ascension day is correct. Ten points to Lester, a bonus of 15. <laughs> When in through the looking glass, Humpty Dumpty is explaining the meaning of the words in the first verse of Jabberwocky. What does he define as something like badgers, there's something like lizards, and there's something like corkscrews. They make their nests under sundials, also they live on cheese. I think they're the slidey toes, probably. Anyone? Slidey toes. Well, the, yes, the, 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 the toves are the known part of that. It's toves in general, whether they're slidey or not. Toves. Five point second. What does he say is a thin, shabby-looking bird with its feathers sticking out all round, something like a live mop? It's a little bit of a jub-jub bird, perhaps. Yeah. Jub-jub No, the borough grove. And last, what sort of action does he say is something between bellowing and whistling with a kind of sneeze in the middle? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, we'll try. Snicker-snacking? No, outgribing. The moan rats <laughs> outgrave. We go to our music question. I've got a music bonus mm. of 15 coming, and here's a start. I want you to give me either the title or the singer of this song, and here it is. Now I'm a little shy. I... Lester Artley. Um, it's Romeo and, and Romeo and Juliet. No, for an example, Lester, focus on Juliet. The rest of the music. I like to stay home, Shakespeare's my guy. Uh... Uist Kavanagh. B. A. Robertson. B. A. Robertson is indeed the singer. <laughs> And the title is, of course, Shakespearean, but the actual title is To Be or Not To Be from Hamlet rather than from, from Romeo and Juliet. Ten points to U.S. A bonus of 15. Three more pieces of music with a Shakespearean flavour. In each case, I want the title of the play which inspired them. Here's the first. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer, Midsummer Night's, Night's Dream. Dream, correct. Mandelson's incidental music to the Midsummer Night's Dream, five points. And second, this one, here it is. We don't wait and banners. We next wait, they're over. Then on to Cremona. That's a blast, then Cremona. Our next job is final. Then dimpy, 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 dimpy. Then nine to one, then five to one. Then we'll be over again. Comedy parents. Mm -hmm. The Taming yeah. of the Shoe. The Taming of the Shoe, yes. That's from Kiss Me Kate by Cole Porter. And last of five points, this one. Here it is. Uh, we think it's Romeo and Juliet. It is indeed Romeo and Juliet by Tchaikovsky. Well done, full 15 there on your Shakespearean music. A starter again. What is calculated by the ratio of the speed of a body or the flow of a liquid in a particular medium? You is Doherty. Mach number. The Mach number is correct. Ten points to you. So the speed of sound in the same medium, a bonus of 15 to you. First, what ordinary English word is used as a prefix for those nuclides which have the same number of nucleons but with proton and neutron numbers interchanged? Ordinary English word, prefix. They're called... Well, isotope. No, they're called mirror nuclides. Second, what name is commonly given to the Velasquez painting, properly entitled The Toilet of Venus, showing the back view of a reclining nude looking into a mirror held by a cupid? Anyone? Um, it is 
Venus in the mirror? No, it's called the Rokeby Venus. And last, who invented the reflecting telescope? Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton did five points. The starter again. The minimum distance of national hunt hurdle or steeplechase races in this... Lester Riddock. Is two miles. Is two miles. Track. Very good indeed. <laughs> a racing man when not at Leicester University. Obviously a bonus of 15 to Leicester. First, what is meant by the initials S.A. seen after the name of many companies in France? Société Anonyme. Société Anonyme, yes, private company. Second to five points. What two German words gave the initials S.A. to the Nazi terrorist militia? I don't know. Stormabteilung. Stormabteilung. Stormabteilung, five points. And last, the letters S.A.R. are an exact equivalent and translation in France of R.H.R.H. So what do they stand for? S.A.R. Son Altesse Royale, I suppose. Son Altesse Royale. Son Altesse Royale, five points. A starter again. Which island nation in the Indian Ocean, a member of the British Commonwealth, is named after a 16th century Dutch stadtholder? Lester N. M. Wright. Diego Garcia. And therefore, in terms of Lester, full question to you, it's no conferring. Was taken from the Dutch by the French and in 1810 by the British. U.S. Doherty. Mauritius. Mauritius is correct. Ten points to U.S. <laughs> Furniture 15. First, the name of which Athenian statesman of the 7th century B.C. has become proverbial for harsh and cruel laws? Draco. Draco, five points. Second, which modern weapon is named after the commander-in-chief of the American Expeditionary Force in Europe in 1917? The Pershing missile. Pershing. The Pershing missile, five points. And last, from whose name does the American gangster term GAT for revolver derive? Gat. And they call a revolver a GAT. Gatling. Gatling. Gatling, it's a version of the Gatling gun there. That was a machine gun. A starter again. What market town in County Meath gives its name to an art treasure now preserved in Trinity College, Dublin, which is an eighth... U.S. Williams. A uh, book of Kells. Kells is the place correct. Ten points to U.S. The bonus of 15. First, which author created Stanley Authoris, John Leroyd, and Terence Mulvaney? Williams. Tennessee Williams. No, Kipling. It's his soldiers three. Second, who is the elder brother to these three? Lionel, Duke of Clarence, John of Gaunt, and Edmund, Duke of York. Edward III. No, Edward the Black Prince. Edward III was their father. And last, give me the name of any one of the three Prozorov girls who, who constitute Chekhov's three sisters. Olga. Anyone? Olga. Indeed, Olga is one. <laughs> Olga, Masha, and Irina. And we're halfway through the show with the score standing at US 150, Leicester 60. Lots of time to go. And here's a starter. Of which ruler were these complaints made in the second half of the 18th century? And they are not translated. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither... U.S. Williams. George III. George III, yes, it is from, from the Declaration of Independence. Ten points, a bonus of 15. First, what Spanish composer and brilliant pianist was drowned when the line of Sussex was torpedoed by a German submarine in 1916? Anyone? It is... It's Granados. Second, give me the title and author of the poem about Salima, containing the lines, Malignant fate sat by and smiled, the slippery verge her feet beguiled, she tumbled headlong in. Salima? Um, um, Byron. No, it's Thomas Gray on a favourite cat, drowned in a tub of goldfishes. And last, with whom was Edward Williams drowned in a sailing accident in 1822? Shelley. Shelley, five points. Starter again. What is the name meaning in Arabic 50, which is given to the hot southerly dust-laden wind which blows in Egypt and elsewhere from March to May? U.S. Kavanaugh. Sirocco. No, for I'm telling you, it's full question less to no conferring. From March to May, the point of the name being that it is popularly believed to blow for exactly 50 days. You're on your own. It is the come scene, and here's the starter again. What is the general term used for an electronic device implanted in the chest wall to provide electrical pulses? Lester Artley. Pacemaker. Pacemaker is correct. Ten points to Lester. And they're off again. First, for what rather English institution do the French use the phrase le five o'clock? Tea. Afternoon tea. Afternoon tea, five points. Second, whose afternoon does Debussy's tone poem of 1894 describe? Phone, and who wrote the poem it was based on? Five points the pair. Well, it's a, I printed a midi doing phone, but who wrote it? Who wrote the poem? Um. Anyone? 
It is indeed, as you say, La Prévidie d'un Faune, so it's a Faune, it's half the answer, but who wrote the poem with that name? It is Mallarmé, bad luck. And last, give me the author and the subject of the book called Death in the Afternoon. Hemingway Bullfighting. Hemingway Bullfighting, five points. The starter again. Which Shakespearean character, having been unwisely persuaded to issue a challenge to a duel, tries to get out of it? Lester N. A. Wright. Andrew Aguecheek. Andrew Aguecheek, ten points to Lester, a bonus of fifteen. Tries to get out of it by bribery, a bonus of fifteen. First, which ancient London market had been on its original site for more than nine centuries when it was closed and moved elsewhere in 1982? Cullingsgate. Which? No. I thought it was Coffin Carlton. Uh, having been for almost as many centuries notorious of foul language, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, oh, yes, it would be. Billingsgate. Billingsgate. Billingsgate, five points. Second to five points. What American poet wrote in ancient music? Winter is it coming in, ludi sing goddam. Raineth drop and raineth and staineth slop, and how the wind doth ram sing goddam. Which American poet? Uh, would it be Ogden Nash, perhaps? Yeah, go on. Ogden Nash. Vardag, there's found. And last, who is reported to have begun to curse and swear Sometime soon after A.D. 30, saying, I know not the man. St. Peter. St. Peter, correct. Five points. The starter again. Give me the surname of the lady to whom Schumann dedicated his piano solo, Opus 1, being variations on a theme made out of the five notes, A, B, E, G, and G, which spelt her name. Her name was... Lester N. M. Wright. A beggar. Um, spell it for me. A B E G G. Correct. I didn't. I didn't know exactly. A B E G G. I, I gave them to you in the sequence in which they were, in fact, of her name, and he used that same sequence. Ten points to Lester. Bonus of fifteen. First, what epithet was applied to William the First, Prince of Orange, who led the revolt of the Netherlands against Spanish rule? William the Silent, I think. Anyone? William the Silent. Five points. Second, give me the line from Keats's Odes on a Grecian urn, which comes before. Thou foster child of silence and slow time. Thou still unravished bride of quietness. Five points. And last of five points, who wrote the comedy first acted in 1609 about an old bachelor's plan to marry if he can find a silent woman, the title being Epicene or the Silent Woman? Is this Ben Johnson, perhaps? Yes. 1609. Anyone? Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Five points. And we're halfway through this time. Rather, we're up to our picture question. More than halfway through this time. We're up to our picture question with only 35 points now between the teams. And here's your picture starter. Who is this film director? And there he is. Lester N. A. Wright. Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski, 10 points for Lester. Bad luck, you are just behind on the buzz. There are three more film directors for Lester. First, the first one is a British director. Who is he? Here he is. Brian Forbes. Five points. Second is an Italian director. Who is he? Here he is. Visconti? I don't know. Visconti? No, Franco Zeffirelli. And last, another British director. Here he is. Michael Winner. No, Hugh Hudson, Chariots of Fire fame. A starter again. On the surface of what substance does Kish form when the substance in question contains a large amount of carbon, the Kish itself being solid graphite? Ewist Williams. Diamond. What? Diamond. No, Lester, can you take it? You're on your own, no conferring. It is... Lester N.A. Wright. On a lamp surface, surface of a... No, it's lamp. on molten iron, cast or pig iron. A starter <coughs> again. What name is used for each of the following? The state entrance to Constantinople, built to commemorate the victory of Theodosius I over Maximus in 388. U.S. Doherty. Golden Gate. Yes, very good indeed. I was coming, I was coming to San Francisco. Ten points to U.S. Very good, a bonus of 15. First, in what kind of painting is egg yolk used as a medium? Tempera. Tempera, correct, five points. Second, who says in As You Like It? I can suck melancholy out of a song as a weasel sucks eggs. Anyone? It is? Uh, Rosalind. No, Jake Quiz. And last, I might have been a farmyard hen scratching in the sun. There might have been a crowd of chicks after me to run. Who wrote those lines in a poem entitled The Battery Hen? It is? Different one, it's Pam Ayers. And here's a starter again. <laughs> A starter, which English artist who had attracted first public hostility in the 1840s, then lavish praise in the 1850s, was still alive in 1905 to be awarded the Order of Merit, having achieved in the 1860s a record sale price, when his finding of the saviour in the temple now in Birmingham was bought by a dealer for 5,500 guineas. 
Lester Redown. Holman Hunt. Holman Hunt, ten pounds to Lester, and a bonus of fifteen can put you almost in striking distance. <coughs> First, which character in Much Ado About Nothing anticipates Mrs. Malaprop in his gift of misapplying words? It is anyone? What? It's Dogberry. Second, Comparisons of Odor, as he's famous for. Second, who in the epitaph which he wrote for his favourite dog said that he possessed beauty without vanity, strength without insolence, courage without ferocity, and all the virtues of man without his vices, the paragon's name being Boatswain? I think this might have been Lord Byron. Anyone? Yeah. Lord Byron. Byron, five points. And asked, who had a dog called Peritas, after which he is said to have named one of the many cities which he founded? Anyone? Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, five points. Less than five minutes and only 15 points between the teams now, and here's the starter. What is the original meaning of the name or suffix hive, as in the town of hive or in rather hive? Hive meant... Ewist Williams. A settlement. A settlement, no. Lester, can you take it? Lester N.M. Wright. A he. No, it meant... A, 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 sorry, we got the wrong right, actually, but it meant a port or a haven. And here's the starter again. What race of people, indigenous in North Africa, have lent their name to the whole region from Morocco to Egypt? Lester Artley. Uh, the Moors? No, for I'm penal, Lester, full question, you is no conferring, particularly in connection with the coast itself and its one-time notorious pirate. Ewist Williams. Berber. The Berbers, correct. The Barbary Coast, ten points for Ewist, less than four minutes. The bonus. First, at which king's accession were the yeomen of the guard instituted to be his bodyguard? Which Henry VIII. No, Henry VII in 1485. Second, Salvation Yo is a character in a romance of the Spanish Main, written by the rector of Eversley in Hampshire in 1855. Give me both the author and the book. Five points a pair. Uh, romance of the Spanish Kingsley. Main. What? Kingsley. Yes. Uh, Westwood Ho. Kingsley, Westwood Ho. Five points a pair. And last, what essential consideration in relation to the land distinguished a yeoman farmer from others tilling the fields? Hey. Land. Yes. Yes. The, uh, the yeoman possessed his own land. Correct. He was a freeholder. Five points. Less than four minutes to go. A starter again. Who was the 40-year-old MP for Maidstone who, in 1844, wrote that no... You is Doherty. Uh, Disraeli. Disraeli. Very good indeed. Ten points for you is and a bonus of 15. First, what is the word chef, meaning cook, an abbreviation of what phrase? Chef. Oh, I don't know. Anyone? Chef. It is... Chef. The chef de cuisine, the chief of the kitchen. Second, who or what is described nowadays as a diva? D-I-V-A. Um, uh, a native of Devon. <laughs> no, that's a Devonian, I think. <laughs> a, a highly distinguished opera singer. An opera singer. And last of five points, what word is used for the central pin in the diamond pattern of nine pins and for the front one in the triangle of ten pins? They're each called what? The kingpin. Kingpin, five points. Less than three minutes to go. Here's the starter. What famous annual event or season was inaugurated by John Christie 50 years ago in 1930. U.S. Doherty. Glyndebourne. Glyndebourne, 10 points for U.S. The bonus of 15. First, which street in Lower Manhattan runs for seven blocks between Broadway and the East River and provides the name for a flourishing journal founded in 1889? Wall Street. Five points. Second, which wall is described in these words? This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. Hadrian. Anyone? Hadrian. No, it's the wall that separated Pyramus and Thisbe in Midsummer Night's Dream. And last, of which castle built by Richard I did Philip II of France say, I would take it where its walls of iron? And Richard replied, I would hold it where its walls of butter. Um, Calais. No, Chateau Gaillard at Les Andelis. Less than two minutes and here's the starter. When during the circumnavigation of the globe, Sir Francis Drake landed in California, what new name did he give... U.S. Doherty. New Albion. New Albion, yes, ten points to U.S. The brilliant performance, the bonus of 15. First... Of which river is the Vaal, one of the branches, as it approaches the sea, uniting with the estuaries of the Meurs at Godinchem? Uh, Rhine. The Rhine, five points. Second, who is the mother of Prince Rupert of the Rhine? Uh, Prince Charles II. Let's not have it from the audience, please. There's murmurs Caroline. in the audience. Anyone? Caroline. No, Elizabeth of Bohemia, Charles I, sister. And last, what word in English is used today for what Shakespeare calls a Rhenish wine? Hock. Hock, five points. Only a minute to go, and here's a starter. What is the general name for any large brown seaweed, especially any species of laminaria? Lester N. M. Wright. Kelp. Kelp, and they're off again. Ten points to Lester, a bonus of 15, but very little time. First, what metal is obtained from the ore malachite? Chromium. No, copper. Second, why does the type of handwriting known as copper plate have that name? That's where it's originally cast in. That's where it's originally cast in? No, it was as it was engraved on copper plates for engravings. And last, give me either of the African countries along whose joint border the copper belt lies. Oh, Namibia. Is, is Namibia. 
Namibia. Namibia. Namibia. No, Zaire and Zambia. Very little time, and here's the start again. What was the name of the exceptionally large elephant bought by P.T. Barnum? U.S. Donkerty. Jumbo. Jumbo. Ten <laughs> points to U.S. and a bonus of 15. First, what novelist wrote the two unfinished fragments of novels known respectively as the Watsons and Sanderson? It was... Jane Austen. Second, what stage is lacking in the development of those insects described as developed? And there's the gong with the score at US 265, Leicester 175. Congratulations to you. It's on a splendid win, and bad luck, Leicester. was a very good game, in the game indeed, right up to the last few minutes when they pulled ahead. It means that uh, for the moment it's goodbye from Leicester. Goodbye. Bye. And from US, two will be back Bye. next week for their third appearance when they will meet Corpus Christi Oxford. And from me also until next week, goodbye. Yeah!